Yo, what's up? This is your brother Sino the Doodlebug from a group called the Diggable Planets, Cosmophone Orchestra. Chilling here, represent with my man B Shine. My mother's record collection, uh, Lady B. Lady B's radio show in the early days was one of the only conduits to like hear some music that you wanted to hear, you know what I mean? So that was one of my main inspirations and just digging in my mom's record collection and learning how to make pause tapes. When I took uh, guitar and piano lessons, my mom just kept put, I wanted to go out and play basketball, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she just kept pressing on and I'm glad she did because that actually introduced me to a lot of people that <clears throat> got me into more serious side of um, music business, you know what I mean? So I was happy to do that, you know what I'm saying? I went to Settlement Music School for a little while and um, met a lot of good people there. And it led me to a nice little thing, you know what I'm saying? Which ultimately led me to meeting people like Butterfly, Ladybug, you know what I'm saying? And doing what we did. Well, early on, we was all doing separate things, you know what I'm saying? We didn't really, once we got together, it was like a, we got, I don't know, we caught a wave and we just, everything, we got lucky and just everything started moving into place. But prior to that, we all each had our own individual struggles that led to that, you know what I'm saying? I was in a group called the Dread Poet Society, DPS, that was based in Philadelphia. And we were a three-man unit. We did shows here and there. We made demo tapes. I had dreams of being big, being on Rap City, you know what I'm saying? And then eventually I uh, met Ishmael. Me and him started, you know, trading war tales and shit. He was telling me how his, his trying to make his demo and what he was doing. He lived in Seattle. He moved to Brooklyn. Started working for Sleeping Bag Records, met all these different people. He had this new project called The Digital Planets. He broke down the whole theme and concept of it to me. And I wasn't really the same lingo, but the same mantra was was relevant to what I was living. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't call it the same things he did. So I felt like, yo, this is a this is a fellowship. I was down with that. And we just started working together. And at the time I was um dating a uh, ladybug. So she was always around. And Eventually, we just, I don't know, I can't even really remember how it just all came together. I would, if I told you that, I would be lying, because I really don't remember. It's just, it's just, we just were all together, you know, in my grandmother's crib, uh, Ishmael's grandmother's crib. They lived around the corner from each other, up on Chew Avenue. Um, and she came up and visited, and it just, I don't know, it just became, it just turned into what we see today, you know what I'm saying? And um, it was a blessing, you know what I'm saying? We all had different ways. In my path, I was doing... Um, Hip hop shows, producing, you know what I'm saying, break dancing, graffiti, and I know Ladybug was doing. She was dancing a little bit before she started getting into the hip hop thing, and Ishmael, of course, was working as an intern at different record labels in New York, and he was producing. He actually created the whole thing with Digital Planet. So they didn't really. In the beginning, it was just noise in the basement to them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just like turn that shit down. You know what I'm saying? It came. It became real to my mom when we were at the Grammys and she was sitting down next to me and it was all these different people around us and she was like, wow, <laughs> this whole, okay, that noise you was making in the basement turned into this, okay. So, you know what I'm saying? I think that's when it became a reality to her in terms of like this was, because uh, before that it was just, it was just a dream that her little son had, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't going to try to break my heart, but she wasn't really, 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 trying to um push me but she all oh, but she actually it was the catalyst that got me to be who I was cuz her record collection her knowledge of music you know what I'm saying and her creative uh just personality was just always drew people like that to us you know what I'm saying we always had people that came around that was always drop some jewel on you making it big <laughs> i mean i never thought i would ever do that you know what i'm saying so that was good i mean outside of that I just want to be able to make a living, make good music, but do it at my own, my own behest. And I don't want to be told what to do, you know what I'm saying? So if I have to sacrifice certain things to do that, that's what I'll do. To persevere in a world where nobody thought I could do it after Digital Planets was over, nobody even thought about me. It was all about Ladybug or Butterfly. And so to be able to maintain and keep a name out there to whatever level it is, I, I'm, I'm proud of myself for being able to do it, you know what I'm saying? And you know, being able to um, collaborate with so many great musicians and um, poets, lyricists, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've had a great life. I just want to hopefully have left a, a, um, a catalog of good music, a legacy I can leave back to, to my kids to be proud of, you know what I'm saying? It's not about whether I had a whole lot of money or anything like that. It was more like, 
I was able to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. You know what I mean?